the Jamie Angela. Hi. Yes. So uh, welcome, everyone. Um, before we begin, I just want to acknowledge um, that the session is being recorded. All of you probably just heard that that message. Um, and it will be sent out uh, after today's session to all presenters. Um, so hello and welcome to the 2024 Library Assessment Conference Presenter Orientation. I'm Jackie Ballinger. I use she, her pronouns. I'm Director of Assessment and Planning at the University of Washington Libraries and co-chair of the 2024 Conference Planning Committee. And Nancy, I will hand over to you. Hi, everyone. I am Nancy Turner. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Director for Planning, Strategy, and Organizational Development at Temple University Libraries. And with Jackie, I'm co-chairing the 2024 uh, conference. So Jackie and I would love to want to um, thank you so much for being here, um, for all that you and will continue to be all that you have and can, will be continuing to make this a successful conference. Um, we've not been uh, in uh, an in-person library assessment conference since 2018. So there's a great deal of excitement um, about what's coming, coming up, as well as a bit of nervousness about ensuring that the conference goes smoothly and uh, the experience is a good one for presenters and attendees. So some things that um, are going to be outside of our control, like the weather in Portland, but some things are within our control, um, more so like providing support and guidance for you as presenters. So this is an opportunity to share some of that guide, some guidelines, address your questions, and also just an early opportunity to network with one another, um, an important um, way uh, in which the networking is an important way in which the conference contributes to the library assessment community. Jackie, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for advancing the slides. I think Nancy and I just dove right in and, and Finds a, a chance to catch up. Um, so I just want to echo Nancy's thanks and excitement for the, the conference. In keeping with that fresh start for returning to our first in-person conference since 2018, the planning committee was really eager to try out some new format types this time around. So in addition to papers, we also have learning labs, which are short, practical, hands-on sessions, uh, common reads, uh, posters, of course, and panels. Um, we received uh, over 180 proposals and the committee was uh, just felt that the quality and strength was great. And we're just so grateful to all of you as presenters for sharing your work and being part of this community. And we also wanna take a moment to thank our amazing planning committee um, who have been working hard for the past year and a half to, to put together a rich conference for all of us. And lastly, we're very grateful to our sponsors who have contributed um, to contributed to the conference um, to the, the, the amount of over $40,000. And a special thanks to EBSCO, um, whose sponsorship at the platinum level was the largest contribution we've ever received for, for LAC. So gratitude for all of you, the planning committee, and to our sponsors. So with that, we want to take a moment and um, give you all an opportunity to connect with each other. Um, we'd like to just to start by doing some small group breakouts to contribute to that building, that community of care, giving you a chance to meet some new people and maybe have a chance to, to uh, recognize some, some faces new and old before you get to the conference. We'll split you up into small groups for a quick round of introductions. We're asking you to share your name, your pronouns, if you would like, your institution, and you can share if you have to choose coffee or chocolate. Um, I'm not sure I could choose because we're all assessment folks. You can also choose NA and offer another option if you'd like, but which, which of those would you choose? 
Um, and we'll give you three to four minutes before we we'll bring you back. So with that, I believe um, the magic is happening behind the scenes to set up the breakout rooms. Uh, Angela and Jamie, is that, are those gonna open? Working on it, give us just a second here. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. So I will, while they work on that, I will just say what we're planning to cover today is really going through the kind of general um, dates and um, tips for um, preparing for the conference. And we'll talk through format by format for presenters to kind of give you a chance to hear uh, some of the the, the dates, um, tips for presenting, and then we'll have plenty of opportunity for Q&A as well. So. Just, just to give you a sense, we will go through format by format, as well as provide a general overview of what to expect. So. I feel like I need some interlude music to, to keep us going at this stage. Welcome back everyone. Thank you for doing the breakouts. I know that um, can be challenging. We're um, on our end, we're, we're dealing with some technical issues, but I think we have it all resolved. Again, I'm Nancy. Um, I'm gonna present some basic information about the conference. Um, and um, Jackie and I will um, throughout the presentation today um, and Jamie and uh, um, Angela will be will be sharing sharing the stage so to speak so um, the conference is going to include seven concurrent sessions uh, there are at the uh, Hilton Portland downtown hotel we've reserved for the conference six session rooms. Those rooms will be set up with uh, seating rounds and also in theater style, uh, depending on the format and the size format of the the session as well as the um, the size of the room. The formal conference will be taking place between Thursday at ten thirty to four twenty five. That will be sessions one and two on Friday from 8.45 to 2.20, uh, sessions three to six. And on Saturday from 9.05 to 11, session seven. Uh, all presenters are going to be in person. Um, what you can expect in the session room, each room will be equipped with a projector, a screen, and sound. Uh, there will be a podium as well as a handheld wireless microphone, a PC laptop, and basic Wi-Fi. And that's important. These are going to be PC laptops. Presentations will be preloaded onto that PC laptop. Room setups, as I said, are um, round tables and chairs, uh, though two rooms are going to be set up with theater style seating. A workshop kit with Caesar, scissors, tape, post-its and stapler, and then hand sanitizer, wipes and masks in each room. Um, as presenters, you will have a good bit of support in, in the rooms. We'll have um, each session will have a room moderator. Well, for papers, paper sessions will have a room moderator who keeps time, facilitates the question and answer, and supports the presenters in, in things that they need. Um, the room manager will be supporting access to stream text, uh, our live closed captioning on personal devices uh, will assist with seating and accommodations and assist with audience microphone management and ensuring um, the code of conduct is abided to by all attendees and, and participants in the conference. 
And then we'll also have volunteer session scanners. And these folks will be um, scanning uh, the barcodes as as attendees come into the into the room and this will be to ensure the safety of everyone and and make sure that we keep to the room capacities uh, there's also going to be roaming audio visual tech support uh, floating between sessions and the room manager will have access to that um, that tech support that support if if you need that um i think that's the end of my piece i'm going to turn this over to jamie who will talk more about logistics hi everybody my name is jamie butler and i'm the director of events for arl my pronouns are she her and i prefer chocolate over coffee <laughs> Um, I actually don't drink coffee at all. Uh, <clears throat> so I just have a couple of overall logistics notes to share. Um, there will certainly be more that will come out as we get closer in, into the conference in, in October, and we'll send a no before you go and all the goodies. But for now, we just wanted to reemphasize that there is a local printer option for those of you who um, are presenting posters and might want to have your poster presented locally. That information is on the presenter guidance page on the website. Um, Alpha Graphics is um, located in downtown Portland, not far from the property, um, and uh, they are a good and close solution. Um, if you were going to have any handouts printed or anything like that to support your content or session, you could also um, work with them to have those printed locally there. Um, I wanted you to know that the room manager uh, will be your point of contact for any logistics needs in the room during the session. So as it relates to the session, they are there to help answer those questions. But if you have other questions related to general needs of the conference or your own conference experience, um, the hotel um, guest room, for example, those kinds of things, those should be directed to the LAC information um, on site, or if it's prior to the conference, then to the LAC inbox as usual. Um, the footprint of the hotel itself is small. And what I mean by that is um, we're not covering a vast geography of land. <laughs> um, so it's a very sort of tight, um, but very tall building. And so there's two, um, two levels of meeting space that we'll be working on. Um, so it's really easy to traverse between um, the two floors. And there is elevators, escalators, and stairs from the main lobby to the meeting space uh, floors that we'll be using. Um, so that's my bit. I'm going to pass it on to... Angela. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Popolardo, Senior Program Manager for Information and Services at ARL. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm going to go over some of the logistics for submitting changes to your presentation details um, and also some accessibility stuff. So the first step is to make sure that your presentation format and description and title are all accurate on the conference website. So I've just popped a link in the chat there. Um, if you do have changes, um, you can submit them via the Google form that's linked from the um, presenter guidelines page. And it's, I'm also gonna put that in the chat. And those changes are gonna be due October 4th, 2024 this year. Um, the form can be submitted multiple times. You can submit one change at a time, or if you have a few at once, you can submit them all together. When you're ready, um, you can then go back to the form to upload your materials. So if you um, have slides, handouts, any poster files or paper files, those can all be sent via the same form. Um, any format can submit slides or handouts, but slides are required for the paper presentations. And posters, poster presenters, um, we're asking you to submit a digital version of your poster, and that's going to be shared on the event website and in the app in advance of the conference. Uh, I'm seeing the question in the chat. No, the, the slides 
and posters are not due by October 4th, just the changes are due by October 4th. We'll have a summary of all the deadlines at the end of the presentation. Um, and then I'm gonna move into um, a little bit of information on accessibility on slides. Um, some general recommendations. Uh, please include alternate text for images, which is a short description of the image, um, just saying what it's a picture, what it's a picture or photo of. Um, ensure that color is not the only means of conveying information. So you'll want to use bold or italic if you are using color to emphasize text, for example. Use a sufficient contrast for text and background colors. And we recommend using a color contrast checker for that as well. Um, use a larger font size, 18 to 24 point sans serif fonts are recommended and sufficient white space uh, before and after text so that it's easy to read from far away. If you have videos embedded in your presentation, uh, we recommend closed captioning, of course, and um, please avoid any flickering, flashing, or animation in your slides. Um, there's going to be additional recommended accessibility resources for your paper files and your poster files, and those are linked from the presentation. And we do have a few resources we're sharing today that are specific to presentations. Uh, I will put these in the chat as well so that you can click on them if you're really excited to dig into accessibility. Um, next up is a section on uh, accessibility in the room while you're presenting. So we recommend always using the microphone, of course, um, verbally describing all meaningful visual content, uh, printing and providing um, presentation slides or virtual access. Um, for example, if you have a QR code to um, additional handouts, that's great. Um, or you can provide printed handouts as well. Use clear and inclusive language that is gender inclusive, non-ableist and avoiding jargon. And uh, remember to give a little bit of time for participants to process what you're saying. So if you tend to be um, a fast talker, uh, maybe try to remember to build in some pauses. Um, that's my section, so I'll turn it back over to you, Jackie. Thank you so much. And again, just wanting to emphasize the importance of accessibility for and so thanks, Angela, and please do get in touch if you have any questions about that. Um, Jackie, did, Jackie oh, yes. sorry, I'm going to interrupt real fast. I just wanted to verbalize a question that came into the chat um, about these slides for this orientation session. So um, we will um, send out these slides along with the recording after today's session. So you will have access to this information um, after this moment in time. Go ahead. Thanks. Oh, no, thank you. And I since we're on that, uh, Angela, I did just want to point out that the form, a couple of folks have said there isn't a way to update presenter info. So I said we can have a look at it and just make sure the question is correct. So thanks, everyone. This is why it's good to have a community of people looking at all of this. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, guidelines by format. And I'm going to start with paper presentations. And some of this information is going to be kind of repeated in different sections, but for folks who are here because they're doing one format, it's useful to hear that information and pay attention to the format that you'll be working in. Um, for paper presentations, we're asking folks to submit a draft paper by October 14th. And this is really um, something that we have heard uh, that's important to support accessibility. So we're strongly encouraging folks to submit their draft papers in advance of the conference. So anyone who may just want a little extra time to process or kind of engage with the information can do that. Um, we will make these papers, the draft papers available to attendees ahead of the conference. Um, and draft papers and any handouts will be made available as they're received. In terms of the paper elements, um, paper should be um, about 3,000 to 5,000 words in length. Um, and for final papers, um, we're asking those to be due um, by January 25th, and those will be posted on the conference website. So you can submit a draft paper in advance of the conference and then have an opportunity to revise and submit that. 
Um, contributions should conform to the ARL paper style guide, which I think Angela can put the link to chat in there. And that's also in the presenter guidelines. Um, again, check the accessibility of your paper using tools such as the accessibility checkers in Microsoft or Adobe Suite. And please go ahead and upload your draft paper PDF um, via the presenter changes and file uploads form. So that form will be your kind of key, key point of contact um, in terms of making any changes and uploading um, papers and slides. Um, in terms of your prep presentation, um, it's important to time your presentation so that you do not exceed the time limit. Papers are 20 minutes with five minutes for Q&A. So 25 minute total for each, each one. Um, we're limiting paper presentations to two speakers. Presenters should discuss key points in advance and work within their allotted time frame for how they wanna divide that up if you have two presenters. Each session will include up to four paper presentations on a common theme. As, as um, we said earlier, a moderator will um, welcome the audience, coordinate the speakers, keep time, and kind of moderate Q&A. And you can, again, use the schedule page to find your session time. And presenters will speak in the order listed on the conference program. In terms of the slides, um, those should be submitted in Microsoft PowerPoint only. As Nancy said, we do only have PCs, uh, PC laptops available in the conference room. So we're asking PowerPoint format. Um, you may choose to include handouts with the presentation and please just upload those along with the PowerPoint. Um, so those can be made available via the event website and apps. And again, um, those final papers are due, and I'm sorry, I said the wrong date, January 15th uh, of 2025 is when they will be um, due and then posted afterwards on the conference website. And with that, I think I am handing over to Nancy to talk about poster presentations. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, so poster presentations, uh, we have such a great variety of posters. So thank you all for um, submitting those and, and coming to present. A poster, these are formal graphic presentations of a topic displayed on a poster board. This format offers an excellent opportunity for presenting data and visualizations, um, big ideas and action. Uh, post, the posters will be exhibited and presented during a reception. Posters will um, should not uh, be used to advertise a, a product or, or a service. Um, there are some additional guidelines on the presenter guidelines. And I think that that link has been shared. It's on the website. So some logistics for poster presenters. Um, you as a presenter are responsible for printing, carrying or shipping your poster to the conference or having it printed locally in Portland. Um, there is, we provided a contact information for a printer who can locally in Portland near the conference hotel uh, print, print your poster at, at your um, expense. Posters need to be dropped off the physical poster uh, at the LAC attendee check-in by 5 o'clock um, p.m. on Thursday, November 7th. And the on-site conference planning team will manage the assembly of the posters on the boards. Uh, we'll be using standard push pins um, to hang those posters. Picking up your posters, um, if you do want to keep your poster, um, you'll want to, you'll need to take them at the end of the session on Friday evening. Remaining posters not taken at the end of um, that evening will be recycled at the end of the conference. LAC, the Library Assessment Conference, is not able to assist with shipping posters. 
Um, we do have, a, we'll have awards for posters. Uh, each posters will be reviewed by two volunteer experts for each poster theme, and then the top posters in each theme will be recognized during this Saturday opening breakfast. Um, accessibility, this is really important. Um, we strongly encourage you to review and follow guidance on designing accessible posters. And please pay particular attention to the amount of information you include and the font size and style you employ on your poster. Uh, resources to guide you in this um, are available on the event website. Finally, uh, the digital poster file is um, is due on October 25th, 2024. Uh, this is a PDF of your poster. Um, it's required to, um, we are requiring these to be posted to the conference website in advance of the conference, again, for accessibility for all attendees. Um, and you, again, you'll be using the presenter changes and file submission Google form to uh, get your file into us. I'm going to turn it back over to Jackie, and she's going to talk about the additional formats that we'll be um, using for the conference. Thank you, Nancy, and keep those questions coming. It's great, and already folks are answering each other's questions, and that is what is so great about our community. So thank you for everyone for pitching in. Um, I'm going to talk about the other formats, the learning labs, the common read discussions, and the panels for learning labs. Um, so learning labs, again, are short hands-on sessions that are really designed to teach practical knowledge on a specific assessment topic. Um, and they, these are going to be very interactive. They may share innovative strategies or approaches related to assessment methods or provide new perspectives on common challenges um, or update, update knowledge and engage in community discussion. They are allotted two hours and maximum capacity is 50 people. Um, we are asking um, those who are doing learning labs, if you wish to show slides during your learning lab and, and feel that there's, there's content there that would be good to share in advance with attendees, please go ahead and upload your presentation as a PowerPoint format so we can have it ready to go uh, on the, the, the laptops in the room. Um, you may also have handouts, um, so please upload those as well um, so that those can be placed on the event website and app. Um, slides will be made available to all conference attendees via the website and app, and as I said, will be preloaded onto a computer in the session room. And again, using that printer or that presenter changes and file submission form for slides and handouts. Uh, common reads discussions. Um, these are facilitated, um, audience-engaged conversations organized around uh, a, a publication, either an article or a book chapter or chapters, um, and there are varying lengths of those. Discussions are allotted uh, 50 minutes, and we expect between 20 and 50 participants with a maximum of 50. Again, if you have slides or handouts, we're asking you to upload those. Um, and again, those will be made available to all conference attendees. I will say too that for learning labs and common reads facilitators, if there are any instructions that you would like to, to have provided to those who will be attending, for example, here is a link to the open access journal article. Please make sure to read the article in advance. Go ahead and include those in that um, presenter changes and file submission form. That is the way that we will make those instructions available to attendees in advance. So please go ahead and, and think about um, whatever it is you would like to communicate to attendees and use that that um, that form to signal those those instructions. And lastly, we've got perspective panels. Um, 
we have for those uh, sort of between four to six panelists. We some of those uh, panelists will also act um, as a moderator. There may be one to two moderators involved. Whoever is the designated person moderating the conversation should be prepared to keep time and act in that kind of moderator role. We are allotting these 50 minutes maximum, and we really want to encourage panelists to engage with the audience and each other in active ways. So not just waiting until a Q&A at the end. So interacting, posing questions along the way, we are really trying hard to avoid kind of having a sequence of mini papers with Q&A just at the end. These are really designed to kind of engage in dialogue on key topics. Um, again, same instructions. Please go ahead and submit any PowerPoints or handouts in advance, and um, those will be made available via the conference website and app. So I think with that, that is all of the different format instructions. And now I'm going to hand back over to Angela to talk about the deadlines. Okay, hey, so I'm just going to summarize the deadlines. These are also at the top of the presenter page for your reference. Um, so October 4th, we're asking for any changes to session titles, abstracts, and presenter information. October 14th for paper presenters, that's when the draft papers are due. Please submit those as PDFs. October 25th is when all presentation slides are due, no matter what format, um, and those are requested in PowerPoint format. Also on October 25th, poster files and optional handouts, uh, PDF as well, please. November 7th by 5 p.m. Pacific time, because it's in person at the conference, uh, poster drop off on site at the attendee check in desk. And January 25th, 2025 is when final papers are due. Um, and those are due as PDFs. realized, Angela, that we did not assign anyone to MC Q&A. So unless you would like to do it, I, I think we, we've got quite a few questions and answers here. So I was just going to kind of go through and, and um, talk through um, some of the questions that I don't think have been answered yet, um, but keep going, go ahead and, and put those in chat. Um, and we will continue to pick them up. Um, I will just go ahead and answer the one that um, came in from Anne about the common read discussions. Will they be in rooms set up as theater or with round tables? Um, common reads and learning labs will be in rooms with round tables to facilitate um, that discussion and interaction. So um, that, is, uh, that is correct. Um, Susanna, yes, um, I think there are um, two different dates, January 15th and January 25th. I believe, um, Angela, correct me if I'm wrong, it is in fact January 15th, is that correct? It says the 25th on the website and in my notes. Okay, that, great. We can, I guess we can fix that. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. Let's go with the 25th. Um, so we will correct that and make sure that everyone has that updated information. All right, I'm going to go all the way back up to the top. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, so with present presentations being preloaded onto a PC laptop, does this mean you are providing a shared laptop each presenter will use? The answer is yes. Uh, you do not have to bring your own laptop. We will have uh, a laptop there that all presenters can use with the presentations preloaded. Um, okay, so Jackie, this I'll just I'll just add to that. So the reason yeah. why we're doing that is to um, eliminate um, device changing. Um, that can suck up time in between folks and um, some of the sessions, the papers in particular, are pretty tight. So we're using um, universal laptops in each room to eliminate that, that process. Thank you, Jamie. And that is one of the, the 
great things about all of the amazing content we have is that the program is really, really full. Um, but that is, again, why we're trying to kind of streamline and make sure we keep to time in sessions and um, reduce the, the amount of time we have in transition. Um, so this one, I think, is Angela and Jamie. If an attendee accidentally walks and scans into the wrong room and wants to leave to go to the correct room, do they scan out? Um, so yeah. What's the flow there? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we didn't and we didn't we didn't really say what's happening because we haven't put that out yet to the full conference audience. We're still working out the details of the session scanning process. So what I'll say at this point is that <clears throat> just to clarify things. So prior to the conference, we will be launching and making the um, conference app available and inviting all attendees to select their sessions in advance. So pre-selection is required in order for us to, to manage crowd control in rooms. And so when you go to scan in a room, if you didn't select that in your agenda, you won't be able to scan in. That's the answer. So you will have pre-selected what you're going to. If you didn't pre-select what you're going to, then the same thing would happen. You would scan in, I believe, and you wouldn't be technically assigned to that session to be scanned into it. So I think that answers the question, but more detail will come out as we release that information in October about how we're going to manage um, building your agenda as an attendee and then um, scanning into each session as you arrive. Thank you for that, Jamie. And I, I just want to say, I, I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm excited about this. We have heard a lot of feedback from in-person conferences in the past about kind of room capacities and um, so, I think this this will be helpful for common reads, for learning labs, those cases where there is a set limit, but also helping us to to use data to plan effectively um, for um, for the conference. Um, so I'm just going to continue to go through the questions. Nancy, Angela, Jamie, interrupt me at any point, please. Um, you said, are workshops able to update their descriptions before October first? Fourth, or should we avoid that since folks are already signing up for workshops? Um, that is a great question. I think if there's a change, we can update it. Yeah, as long. I mean, I assume it's not going to be a major change. We want the information as up to date on the website and registration form as possible. So yes, please submit changes. Uh, do we know the recommended lead time for the local printer for posters? Sorry, I hit the slide button instead of the uh, <laughs> the unmute. Um, uh, um, yes, I, I don't know. I put a response in the chat that I will find out and I will add that to the presenter guidance page, um, what the lead time is or the drop dead for submitting to have something printed. Thank you, Jamie. Um, and yes, it also looks like uh, Sarah's question about how many copies of handouts um, we can provide room capacities, yep. as Jamie said. And I, I will just encourage folks to to, uh, and we will kind of provide more information about the app. You know, thinking about sustainability. Um, yeah, we're really like wanting to support uh, folks using the app. Understand if if folks really feel the need for a paper handout. But um, do just keep that in mind um, as, you're, as you're planning um, in terms of um, the room capacities and, and how, much, um, how much paper we're, we're using up and recycle at the end of the conference. We are going yeah. to be in Oregon after all, where, you know, there's a lot of trees. I'm just, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm just... Um going through and Jackie maybe, maybe verbalize the question about Google Slides versus PowerPoint just in case somebody didn't see that right thank you I will scroll back up to that and um I think the question is uh did you do bear the question was did are we accepting PowerPoint slides only? And the answer to that is technically yes. And you could still do a Google, you could still build your slides in Google and download them in PowerPoint format and submit that way. 
Thank you, Jamie. While well, I was scrolling through yep. the very long chat. Yep. Um, so, uh, Kara, thank you for the question. What is the room setup for panels, or is there a listing of which rooms are set up as theater? Um, Jamie, yeah, I can just tell you the Galleria rooms are theater. So we have two rooms, Galleria uh, East and West or North and South. <laughs> I don't remember which direction they are, but um, they're on the lower level um, on the same floor as the, um, the, the main general session room. And those two rooms will be theater style. Everything else will be um, rounds. Um, and I think I am I'm just continuing to go through. If I have uh, missed your question and it's further up in the chat, feel free to repost it. Um, but I wanted to pick up um, Becca's question. Um, will there be any flat surfaces at the poster reception for handouts or business cards? Or will the poster presenters keep these types of info, uh, these types of items on them? Uh, Jamie. Nope, and that is noted in the poster guidelines that there is no tables um, or power resources for um, poster uh, presentations. Um, we would encourage you to use a QR code for connecting people to you or your information or to connect in the app through the networking tool. And just to verbalize, uh, can we share handouts via the app? And Angela said yes. There. Oh, yes, That's please. Yes. yes, yeah. That's really the preferred method, I believe. Um, and so Laura, who is one of our workshop facilitators, um, said, will the workshops use generic room laptops as well? Yes. Jackie, um, one one question I saw, I'm not finding it now in the chat, it related to the size of the post-its. Post-its? Yeah. I referenced post-its in as the room rooms being equipped with post-its. Oh, a it's workshop a kit. Workshop. Um, oh, yeah, just it's workshop. Okay. Just, just a standard, I don't know what size this is, the standard square size okay. all right so not all of the rooms just the rooms that will be all of the rooms will have a workshop kit with basic supplies oh, okay. in it but mm -hmm. it's not post-its like for the audience that's it's a pad of post-its for the presenter presenters if they need to make notes or or do something so if you are needing post-its for an activity as part of your session then you would want to plan for that we also had a question um, from work, uh, workshops presenter, if the deadlines are the same for handouts and slides for those that are presenting in workshops, and the answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Great. And kind of similarly, um, Melissa was asking, is there a kit similar to the workshop for learning labs? So I... Let me rephrase. It's a breakout room kit. So every all six session rooms will have a breakout um, workshop kit, room kit, however you want to, whatever term you want to use, there'll be some logistical supplies in there. Um, so even papers can use them. So yeah, everybody. Great. Thank you. Um, I I see a question from Susanna also related to pollsters. Um, um, I'm absolutely, just to make sure she's absolutely clear, poster boards are the stands that will be in the room. So posters themselves will be floppy and attached to the boards with pins. Yes, so, um, so what we're expecting is just the poster. paper floppy right. thing. Yes, yes. And so, attaching it to something. Yeah, so yeah. you're printing your poster and we're attaching it to a poster board. And so, um, and I know that there was a question earlier on and we directed back to the presenter guidance about the board size. So just to provide some greater clarity. So these are freestanding standard eight by four poster boards for scientific and academic conferences. They're uh, like a um, fabric, usually on, on both sides, they're double-sided. And so the size of the board is eight by four. 
we've asked for posters to be no larger than four by four, um, which means that there will be two posters on each side of the board, four posters on a double-sided board total. Hopefully that helps clarify. And and Jamie, I just wanted to add, and I, I apologize, Nancy, if you said this already, but one thing that it is worth clarifying is that um, for those of you who have experience of the conference in the past, this will look different for those of you who are new to doing poster. This will, this will be uh, standard then. Um, we are breaking up the poster session into to one hour chunks. So not everyone is going to be presenting for the full time um, because of the space. And that is also because we wanted, um, based on feedback from the past, we wanted to give poster presenters a time to have something to eat, to network and talk with their colleagues. So it, it is worth paying attention to which hour slot you will be in. Um, and that will also help to kind of manage the space and give us some space um, in terms of the poster board setups as well. Angela and Jamie, is that, I have not said anything incorrectly. Is that, is that all right? Great. All of that is true. Yes. Um, and Susanna said, so each board will display four posters, two on one side, two on the other. Yes, that is correct. Unless there is a small caveat. I haven't muted myself, have I? Okay, no. <laughs> There's a small caveat that uh, we could end up with some single-sided boards based on how we lay the room out, which we're in the process of figuring out and finalizing now. Um, but none of that would affect what you're doing. Just focus on your individual poster and then we will get them posted up and we will manage if we increase the number of boards in the room. And if some of them only have two posters versus four, but that would be the only thing. Just, I don't want anybody to be surprised if they come in and, and we've, we've made that decision. So it's a space issue that we'll determine once we finalize the layout. And uh, Jamie or Angela, can you say when the app for the conference will be up and does it work for Apple? Oh yeah, it works for Apple. <laughs> yeah, it works for works for everybody, Androids and Apple. Um, well, if I say when, then I'm kind of held to that. <laughs> but um, our goal is at least two weeks before the conference. So um, at least by the end uh, of October is what we're shooting for. Um, that we will release the app and the know before you go information at the same time, which I usually like to do at least two weeks in advance. When will the poster presenters know their time slot, Jackie, Nancy? I think this is me. Um, oh, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have a real answer. Um, this is now with me to work on the layout and then we're going to try to do every other so that you have more room when you're standing there. Yeah. Um, so I think I need to do the layout first, um, probably in the next week or two, I think, hopefully I'm not. Um... Maybe we'll try by October 4th for that. Sure. At the late, I think. We'll yeah. Have... You give us stuff by October 4th and then we'll give you something back. How's that? <laughs> Soon. Soon. And we'll try to do it sooner than that. Yep. Thanks for bearing with us, everybody. We're a small, mighty team at ARL. <laughs> um, and just one more. Uh, will you take into consideration if we have two posters? Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, then you yeah. don't get to eat. I think the idea <laughs> is we're going to try to put your posters next to each other so that you can present them both kind of similar. Sort of. Then I will bring my chocolate with me. <laughs> no, we're not going to have you present each at a different time slot. Yes. We will get you some coffee and chocolate, Laura. So, <laughs> All right. So we are just about at time, um, Jackie and Nancy, and I think we're ready to wrap up. Um, thank you for all the um, complimentary feedback in the chat. We are working really hard to be as communicative and transparent as we can in this process leading up to the conference. So please reach out if we haven't answered something that you um, need answered 
or if anything bubbles up or percolates as we continue on in the preparations for the conference. We hope that mm -hmm. the data points communications that we've started to send out also are helpful. If you haven't been clicking and opening those, make sure that you do because they do have ongoing information that is helpful to keep you informed. Jackie, mm -hmm. Nancy, I'll let you sign it off. I'm going to say something and I'll let Jackie say goodbye too. But um, also the website has tons and tons of information. All of the guidelines for present presenta presentations are there. So be sure that you bookmark that website and have that as a reference. Thank you all for being here too. Uh, thank you all. We're so excited to see you in Portland. And I can't remember how many days it is, Jamie, but it is coming up soon. I don't know. I think it has a four now. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll be great. So thank you all. And we'll see you at the conference. Bye.